children are band members. I've lived in the north more than half of my life. I object to the presence of this body. I object to the theory that there is no harm being done to our people. I object to a lot of the things that I've heard today. Um, one thing I'd like to say is when there's written submissions, the public needs to hear them before they're repeated. Because the public has the right to know. This industry hasn't been very open to the public. And when they do come to our communities, there's often times that they can't answer our questions. I don't know enough. Our concerns are met with words like no significant risk. I'm sorry, let mine overflow in 2003 in MacArthur. You cannot guarantee me or the people downstream from there that that is not causing harm to our people. CNSC put out in their documents here that radiation does not cause an increase in cancer, and yet the entire day has been spent talking about radiation safety, heavy metal safety. Our people are getting sick. We asked for a baseline health study long ago. The industry knew what radiation could do prior to even opening any of these mines in this section. You knew it 20 years ago, you knew it 30 years ago. You did nothing. You did not protect our people. So now, you have a doctor come up here and say that our cancer rates are the same as the rest of the province. They're comparable with the rest of the province. Well, I'm sorry, the farmers are dying from pesticide use. Our people were not suffering from cancers to the extent and to the degree that they're suffering now. One in 15 people in our community have cancer. This is not a laughing matter. This is not something that we should not be concerned about. And your doctor comes up here and says we need social and mental well-being studies. Well, maybe if we weren't worrying so damn much about the contamination of our lands, our waters, our air, maybe we feel a whole lot more well. This is the feeling of the people of the North. We are not impressed with Canada and their collaboration agreements. I've got some things to address here. As a member of English River, we were not consulted. Most of the people in English River never heard about the collaboration agreement until a week before it was signed. And there was a wake in our community when it was signed. That goes against our culture. But they're told, telling our governance, our leaders, that's not the way you do business. you got to get into the business room. Corporate governance. We don't need corporate governance, we need leadership, we need life. We are no longer naive. We know that radiation, even at low levels, because we can access the studies as well as you can, and we're not buying your propaganda. Those things can cause damage to the DNA at a cellular level and it will affect us eventually. So don't come in here and tell us, have an expert come in here and tell us, oh, we need well-being studies. No 
wonder our young people are dying as well. They don't feel well in this world where our values are undermined and our culture is, we got worried about whether we eat the foods that we've always eaten that were the best foods in the world. Our people, the elders, my children's grandfather, lived at Key Lake before it was a mine. It is their inheritance. It is their inheritance that I'm protecting. I'm also very disgusted that what is being taken out of the ground here is being used in a way that is going to affect people in other places in a very negative way. That is a responsibility. People said they're stewards of the land. Well, that doesn't mean you rip it up and let somebody else decide how contaminated to make it. That's unacceptable. You are in a Denny and Cree territory here. You're in Métis territory. We are the ones that should be setting the limits. Not for the sake of profits. I hear a lot about chemical want and resource revenue sharing. I was listening to a radio program Sunday night on CBC called 180. Anne McClellan, a board member of Chemical, she said, we need a new process by which we ensure for our First Nations, for God's sake, we do not belong to you. That economic benefits are shared fairly. How the hell can economic benefits be shared fairly if most of the profits are leaving this province, the royalty rates are this much compared to them, they hide their money in tax havens in other countries, it's never going to be shared fairly. But she also said that the social and environmental risks are shared and borne fairly. Excuse me, we live here. How are you, or you, or you, going to bear those fairly? You won't. You won't be here as our lives are affected. All the cheerers in the world can't make up for the prevention that could have made this different. I want answers to some of our questions as we submit them in the future and now. Can you guarantee me that those mind spills that happen on a regular basis and that those Shadowy limits are acceptable enough that they're not going to be the next big mistake that you make. I don't accept an industry that thinks we are expendable. You're dealing with some shady people here. The corruption that this money has brought in. False claims that they are the president of a maybe local that doesn't exist, has never been registered with the maybe nation of Saskatchewan. That would be Pine House, and I will submit this if you would allow me, along with the statement of claim that they mentioned this morning, maybe local. I can also address some of your questions about your last speaker survey, because I participated in it, and when I asked who commissioned it, she said, Campbell, I said, yeah, I'll take part in it, she said, oh, good, there's hardly any Northerners taking part. Northerners don't like to answer surveys. 
So your answer is very few northerners actually participate. We also did a poll, and ours are documented with the questions that you answered, and I will put it to you as well. Most of the people do not agree. Uh, most of the people of Saskatchewan do not agree that uranium mining should proceed without proper aliens being looked after in a proper way that will assure the people of Saskatchewan that there is going to always be a guarantee that we are safe from harm. Their claims are based on falsehoods. You will meet more and more people who do not want uranium mining in the North. We want a different economy. We want one that's more in line with our values. That we will not have to worry is going to make us sick in the future. So I don't ever have to hear of young women being concerned whether their babies are going to be affected. With all of the changes that this government has been making to the environmental assessments and environmental protections, I am not assured. I do not feel safe in your hands. And neither do a lot of other people. Our future generations need us to stand up for them. Because decisions are being made that are going to affect them in the future. I object to uranium being mined because of its end products. And the threat that those end products are going to end up here in our territory, being offered as an economic venture. 10,000 years, how about 4.7 billion years? And I know that the studies are showing that it's not going to work because you can't guarantee it. Don't even come to the table yet. Don't even think about coming to the table. This industry was a Pandora's box, all right, that should never have been open because our people knew that. In our cultures, they said, leave that black deathlock rock alone. You guys didn't listen. And that's what's going on here. That's why these people are coming in and saying, okay, we'll sign these agreements because you guys don't listen anyway, so we might as well get something out of it. Like beggars. That's going to help our well-being. You should have been at that signing in English River that day and seen the faces of the people that know. Because we have our own knowledge, we have our own science, and it goes far beyond the what else. Because everything that it has been has come to be. They said a demon would come out from the ground. And it would start killing everything. And it has. Look what it is doing. It is destroying our communities because we are not helping vital communities. It's tearing our communities apart. They get behind closed doors. They don't even want to talk about the impacts. They won't let them talk about the impacts. Those were the questions that our people were asking. Hey, wait a minute, I don't want to know about the benefits, I want to know about the impacts. No, no. We know the impacts. That's all they said. Hey, we're all human. We all deserve to know. We all deserve the right to decide. 
society. Not based on business, but on humanity. Okay, can you finish and allow us to engage in some discussion here? I object to any relicensing, and I want a real health study done to prove once and for all, internationally, around the world, that this is safe for all humanity, now and in the future. Thank you. Why don't we open up the discussion now? Any questions? Dr. McEwen. So, in your presentation, you talk about the cancer rates in your communities. Um, so you give a figure of one in fifteen. Um, it could be. It could be even. Is that across all ages, or is it mainly in older people? Well, how old is born? No, it's not mainly older people. It's getting younger and younger, and that's the trend. So maybe I could ask, uh, what, what, what would an incidence and prevalence rate be for cancer in a community? and the age spectrum, and what would be the primary causes of cancers in a community with those numbers? Saying that, I think it's important that we all understand that populations are aging and the number of elderly as a proportion of the population as a whole is growing for all populations. Uh, perhaps slightly less so for northern population than the younger population. So the observation will be that people, more people seem to have cancer if there are more older people. I can only speak to the data which is based on uh, the collection of people who have cancers or collected by cancer registries and, are, and uh, are reported as such. So based on the health stats report which I presented this morning, um, there is no convincing evidence of an increased cancer rate in northern Saskatchewan compared to southern Saskatchewan. And, and unfortunately I don't have the age Please, uh, before you do this, uh, just, uh, just an additional point. You obviously don't um, believe or accept the, uh, the, the medical evidence that the doctor has been put. So where do you get your data from? So you came up with 1 in 15. Where is that coming from? Knowledge of my community. But one and communities, yeah. There's about 800 people in our community and over 50 of them have cancer. And not all of 
them are old people. My point is, according to our old people, nobody used to die of cancer. It was very rare. And this is endemic throughout the North. It was very rare. It's not because it's because there was never a baseline health study that you can't make a comparison. You can't compare us with the South. And and you so and all, all I'm trying to understand is uh, you so you did you count on your community? Yeah. Did you count on other communities? Because I haven't done an accurate count on other communities, but it's very similar. We were working on something on building a funeral home because everybody's dying. So we did kind of do a basic survey to find out um, what kind of business that would be. Okay. Questions? Questions? Um, let, me, let me ask about you. I don't think we really need gold since the vaults are full of them and it's sitting there doing nothing. It's irrelevant. Uranium is not something we absolutely have to have. We never needed it before you found it and discovered what it could do. And there are other sources for power generation that don't have the problems at the end of the line or the front of the line that this does. Right now, I'm very concerned we're at both ends of that line. As you know, Nuclear Waste Management Organization is also soliciting our communities to store the nuclear waste, the high-level nuclear waste, without actually having more than an experimental plan. That is an acceptable idea. So let me ask you the final question. Your chief was here, we had also a combined house, uh, so obviously the community is divided. So she actually can't sit as chief right now, she shouldn't even have been here, because she's in 30 days prior to the election. And there's a lot of contention in the communities regarding the signing of that agreement, because there wasn't a consultation process. Not once, and I asked, I personally asked chief and counselors to inform me when there's stuff, meetings going on regarding anything nuclear, anything uranium. They never once informed me. So there was no effort made to make sure that most of the people in our communities are well informed ahead of time and can be at the meeting. We tried to t say that at the signing and to say we needed more time as a community to discuss it, but there was a rush to get it signed. There must have been a really big rush for them to break the protocols of our people. Okay, thank you. Thank you for this presentation.
our living, where ducks are living, where any of our food supply could get water from, or food from, should be facing less than severe contamination. That's not acceptable. And if that's the standard odds, uh, we're not going to accept that. Uh, was it at Key Lake? Was your company in the bottom No, side? that was on one of the newer mines that they're planning to open up. Okay. Uh, I'm not exactly sure which lake they were planning to be nestling in the first. Can you call them? Okay, uh, we have to, we promise that uh, we will let you out here at uh, 6 30, it is 6 30. Uh, so, uh, thank you for your presentation. And uh, we will take uh, an hour and we will reconvene.